What's about 14 inches in diameter and we like making nice and hot? Well, rear rotor rings for the AP Racing brake kit, of course. Hello everybody and welcome back. You know, last time I took a look at brake rotors, I took a look at the front for my AP Racing brake kit and now it's time to take a look at the rear. So over on the left there, I have the replacement, which is the Paragon replacement rotor ring that goes on the Essex hat. And on the right is my old AP Racing J-hook rotor uh, and hat. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit more differences between these two than I initially thought there would be. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what they are. Looking at the side of the rotors here, you can see all of the vanes on uh, both of these, the Paragon on the left and the AP on the right, line up very nicely. They're both a 72 vane design, but you can see the design of the vanes um, differs quite a bit. For one, if we look at the veins themselves, it's clear that the veins are fully cast um, and just you know left that way on the AP rotor, while on the Paragon rotor, um, you know the ends are machined off. Now this creates a little bit of an optical illusion because even though uh, like this, you know the AP one has these rounded edges uh, versus the flat edge on the Paragon, and that makes the veins on the Paragon look thicker. However, if you actually take a caliper and measure them, they're both about the same, roughly about you know, 4.15 to 4.4 millimeters thick. So they actually are the same thickness, despite this one looking thicker than the other one. Another thing we see looking at this is that the Paragon has a thicker rotor wall than the AP, and that was something I wasn't expecting. Um, this AP is, you know, right now it's a little bit warm, but it still wasn't that much thicker. It's roughly about, you know, 6.5 millimeters thick right now versus the Paragon is an 8 millimeter thick wall. And if you think that's just due to, you know, the rotor surface being a little bit more worn on the rears, um, that's absolutely not the case because we can measure the airspace or the air gap in between the two rotor walls, uh, which... Uh, measures 14 millimeters on the uh, Paragon and 17 millimeters on my AP Racing, which really means, yeah, like the starting, if it's a 30 millimeter thick rotor to begin with, that, this, uh, that the starting thickness on each of these rotor walls is about six and a half millimeters. And that tells me that rotor still has quite a bit of life left, but since I'm changing to brand new pads anyways, and you know, there's obvious wear patterns of, you know, ridges and valleys, grooves in this rotor from the previous set of pads, um, I'd rather just use a new rotor ring, you know, with this new set of pads that I'm throwing on there for the track. One of the other really nice things about this Paragon rotor ring is that on, on the side wall of it, um, it has the dimensions and also the rotation marker, so you can't really mix up a left and a right. And it even has the production date. So looking at the rear or the inside of these rotors, uh, we, don't, we noticed some more differences. Um, and the first thing that I noticed was the shape of the cutouts um, in between each of the tabs that or flanges that the hat mounts to. Uh, they're a hemispherical shape on the Paragon and they're a little bit more squared off. Um, it kind of matches those square recesses in the hat itself on the AP Racing. Um, so that was kind of an interesting thing to see. Uh, one of the things it does is it means that those mounting flanges on the AP are quite a bit wider overall than the Paragon. So more material there. Uh, I wonder how that affects the strength of it. Of course, you know, there should be enough of these mounting points that, you know, on both of them, I'm sure the strength is adequate, but does that make any meaningful difference? I'm not quite sure. Another difference we see is in the mounting hardware itself. Uh, just like with the front rotors on the AP, uh, they're using uh, NAS bolts, you know, very high quality and uh, standardized um, fastening hardware or fasteners that are held to a standard. And uh, every other one of those gets a spring clip for, you know, anti-noise or whatever. But if you buy the uh, Paragon hardware kit, they give you a spring clip with every single bolt. And since it's not using NAS hardware, it's using standard metric hardware, um, you know, the, the fasteners are uh, an E8 bolt head and an 11 millimeter lock nut, while the uh, NAS stuff, since, you know, National Aerospace Standard or what, something like that, um, it's using Imperial measurements. So here's a closer look at that fastening hardware. 
um, that I mentioned a little bit earlier. And you know, I oriented I oriented these how they would be installed. So you can see on the AP one, right, the head of the bolt is down here at the bottom. Um, and goes through a stack and then there's the nut at the end versus the uh, paragon which has the head of the bolt up here um, on the outside of the rotor and then the nut is on the inside um, you know one of the things about both this nut and the head of the uh, paragon bolt is they are both slimmer than the uh, inside part of it and uh, um, you know I, I do like how the Paragon fastener is using an e-torx and e8 for the bolt um, you know it's not something that's more likely to strip but then again these things aren't really fastened to all that high of a torque spec either um, you know AP racing if you're replacing your rotor rings and your hardware they say torque this to 120 inch pounds and then um, Paragon says torque it to 11 Newton meters very close to that 120 inch pound so yeah you know not a whole lot of difference there one one key difference though is on the Paragon fastener, they recommend putting a couple drops of, they call it high temperature thread locker, and they specifically call out Loctite 243, but 243 is not a high temperature compound. Um, you know, like 271 Loctite Red, that's a high temperature one. Uh, so, you know, when I did fasten this on my rotor back there, I did use a Loctite 243, which I have plenty of. Um, so I'll see how that holds up. Uh, but I wouldn't call that a high temperature compound. Now another thing that was kind of interesting here, and I'm really glad that I ended up reading the instructions uh, on the Paragon website because if you look at the, um, the hardware orientation on the AP, the bolt, uh, the bolt, there's a bolt, then the washer, then the um, spring clip, then the bobbin, and then all of that goes in through the backside or you know it goes through the rotor first then the hat and then on the outside of the hat which would face the wheel then there's another washer and the nut itself um, you know for the bobbin spring clip washers and all that on the paragon it's the same however the the way the bolt goes in is reversed so the bolt instead of in being inserted from the inside poking out like on the ap hardware this one actually starts from the outside on the hat side uh, going in. So the nut is on the inside and the bolt is on the outside um, opposite that of the AP. Now, does it really matter? I'm not you know, entirely sure because they're both providing just a clamp load. But that's what the Paragon instructions say. Uh, so kind of interesting to see that difference. And then on top of that, they also have a torque sequence. Um, I thought it, that was kind of interesting that uh, Essex kind of has you do, do it in a um, triangle or you know star pattern um, versus Essex. They don't specify any uh, torque pattern and it's just, okay, yeah, you could just go all the way around if you wanted. Now, I did find something very interesting with the Paragon Rotors veins, and this is going to be kind of hard to see, and I, I have to try and shine a light in between the veins, but if you look... Um, one of those veins is, you know, continuous. So from the outside of the rotor to the inside, it's, you know, one solid vein. And the vein next to it has a, a recess or a hole in the middle. So it's, you have like a vein that touches the outside and then a break in the vein. And then the other vein continues to touch the inside diameter. Um, and every, every other one of the veins on this rotor is like that. Um, so that's very interesting. Uh, it, you know, I wonder how much that hurts the air pumping capability of this uh, since you don't have essentially a, a, a continuous fan blade that's pumping the air uh, for every other one of these. Um, and I haven't, honestly, I don't think I've seen that before. I guess, you know, with the gyro disc, we had something a little bit different for the front where, you know, the vein was only a half a vein on the uh, outside like the mid diameter of the ring to the outer diameter and it wasn't all the way on the inside. But uh, having a, a hole in the very middle of the vein, I, I honestly don't know what purpose that serves. Now, what about weight? Uh, well, when I weighed the Paragon, uh, you know, as it is uh, fully assembled, I came up with a weight of 17 pounds, 15.3 ounces. So basically 18 pounds. And on my AP Racing, that was 16 pounds, 6.2 ounces, 
maybe if it was brand new it was basically 16 and a half pounds so it does look like the paragon is about a pound and a half more per assembly one thing that's going to be a little bit annoying for me and you know if you have ocd of course this would drive you crazy is the way the slots are oriented the leading edge is on the inside of the hat and then it you know trails out to the outside of the rotor um, you know in the direction of rotation for this paragon which is the complete opposite of the Giro disc rotors I have in front where they lead with the outside diameter and then the inside diameter tails. But I guess they aren't the same shapes anyway since these are straight slots and the Giro disc ones are kind of like a elongated um, you know arc. But I guess it's really not any worse than having you know a, a slot from the Giro disc paired with the J hooks of the AP anyways.